Hello PennDOT Community Traffic Safety Partners. Thank you so much for joining us for another video, which is being produced for you by the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Center for Injury Research and Prevention. In Chapter 4, we'll talk about how to write goals and SMART objectives for your traffic safety program. And in Chapter 4A, we'll talk very specifically about what SMART objectives are and how they can help you. The four key questions that you need to ask yourself to get started with writing SMART objectives for your program and how to make sure that your objectives are within reach. Now you've probably already thought quite a bit about what goals you have for your programs and what objectives you might have for your programs as well, but you might not be familiar with the SMART objectives approach, which is a particular method for writing program objectives that can drastically increase the likelihood that you're going to reach the objectives that you set to reach. And the reason why it works so well is that it forces you to take a step back to make sure that your goals are specific enough, that they're measurable, that they're achievable and agreed upon by your stakeholders, that they're realistic, and that they're time bound. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Specific. Objectives in a program should be very well defined before the program even starts. And so specific that you can tell me exactly who is going to achieve what with your program and by what time? And we'll talk about this more. Objectives should also be measurable. We should know if the goal is obtainable. We should know how far away from completion we are to our goal. And we should also know the metrics that we are going to use so that we can measure whether or not our goal was achieved. Let's talk about goals being achievable. One way to make sure that our goals are going to be achievable is to be sure that before we define our objectives and goals, that they're in agreement with what our stakeholders also want from our program. This is a really important first step that needs to happen before you can define the objectives for your program. Making sure that your objectives are realistic is also very important. In other words, can your objectives be reached with the resources and the knowledge and the time that's available to you and your team? And lastly, your objectives should be time bound, meaning that we need to allow enough time to achieve the goal, but we also need to think about the fact that we might have different goals and objectives for our programs at different time. We'll talk about this more later, but you might have goals that are different for your program at one month out versus three months out or two years out or even five years from the beginning of your program. How can you get started with writing SMART objectives? Well, the way to get started is by asking yourself, Four key questions. What are you looking to have happen from your program? In other words, what do you want to change as a result of your program? Who do you want to experience the change? That's really thinking about defining your target audience. How much do you want them to change? And by when do you want this change to occur? Asking these four key questions can help you make sure that your objectives are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Here's an example. By 2020, it's a very specific time, teen drivers over 16 years old in Philadelphia, now we've got our specific who or our target audience, will have a 15% decrease in crashes caused by distracted driving. In other words, this is something that's measurable, 15% decrease. It's achievable. We're not looking to decrease by 85% by 2020, but 15%, which is a much more real realistic and achievable goal. Right, And perhaps it's more realistic because it allows us some time to also get this done. Another way to make sure that the objectives that you're writing are smart is to start asking yourself smart questions. So for example, is the outcome that you are developing or the outcome that you're looking to achieve with your program, are you using action-oriented words like you're looking to conduct something or develop or build or plan or execute something? Who is going to be involved? And did you get their input in the process? Are there actions that are going to be assigned to particular groups or people? And how is this outcome going to lead to the desired results? It's important to be as specific as possible when answering all of these questions. Let's think about being measurable. How are you going to know that your change has occurred? In other words, what metrics can you use to determine whether or not you've reached the objective that you wanted to reach? You can learn more about metrics and how to collect and use data to measure your outcomes by watching the videos for chapter 3, 12, and 13. And how are you going to collect this information? Again, those chapters will help you with these questions. 
to make sure that your objectives are achievable, you want to ask yourself if it can be done in the proposed time frame, whether or not there are limitations or constraints that are well understood by you and your stakeholders, and whether or not you can achieve these results with the resources that you already have in place, or perhaps are there other resources that you would need to be able to obtain first before you can move on with your program. And thinking about these resources is also going to help you figure out whether or not it's realistic for you to approach these objectives at this time, and whether or not it's really possible to achieve the outcome that you're looking for. You might want to also ask yourself, what is the baseline for my population and what are their priorities? And to make sure that you're time bound, over what time frame do you want this outcome or this need, what, you know, when does this need to be achieved? And this might differ based on where you are in your program and your program development. The next thing to think about is how to make sure you're defining objectives that are within your reach. We would all like to reduce crash rates, but this is not the type of thing that's going to happen right away. So sometimes we start out with objectives that are too long term, and to make sure that we're instead defining objectives that are within our reach, we need to break them down. Here's an example. We might have short term outcomes or objectives for our programs. So these might be outcomes that are reachable within about a one to three year period. These outcomes typically focus on changing individuals' knowledge or awareness or attitudes or behavioral intentions. For example, increased awareness of the risks associated with not wearing a seatbelt. Now that's an objective that can definitely be reached in a one to three year period. But let's think a little bit bigger. Say we had four to six years that we were thinking about. In that case, we might want to think about the intermediate term outcomes. Intermediate term outcomes typically focus on changes in individuals' skills and behaviors, like increasing seatbelt use among teen drivers. Of course, big picture, we can also think about long-term outcomes. Long-term outcomes typically take place over a 7 to 10 year period. And long-term, we might be hoping to decrease morbidity, mortality, and increase quality of life in our given target population. So for example, reducing crash and injury rates among teen drivers. Another way to make sure that you're defining smart goals and objectives versus just overall goals for a program is to be very clear about the difference between a goal and an objective. A goal is simply a broad statement or a long-term expectation that we have about what we want to have happen as a result of our program. It's the foundation for our objectives. But our objectives describe the exact results that we want to achieve and how we are going to achieve them. And sometimes we need multiple objectives to reach our goal. Here's an example of the difference between a goal and an objective. So our program goal might be that we want to reduce teen driver crash rates. But for that goal, we could have numerous smart objectives. Here are two for you to consider. By 2020, teen drivers over 16 years old in Philadelphia will have a 15% decrease in texting and driving. And at the end of the program, at least 75% of students will acknowledge that distracted driving is dangerous. These are examples of realistic, short or intermediate term objectives or outcomes that are measurable, specific, time bound, and realistic. And these can help us to achieve our program goal of reducing teen driver crash rates. You've just completed Chapter 4A from Section 1 Program Planning. In Chapter 4B, we're going to talk about how to translate this to your particular program. We'll present you with an exercise in a worksheet that can help you develop your own SMART objectives. Thank you so much for watching another video that is produced for you by the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Center for Injury Research and Prevention.